Ageless, remarkable St. Louisans. For nine years, we've celebrated the incredible contributions of older adults who redefine retirement. Please join us in honoring the latest class of these dynamic, make a difference seniors who exemplify what it is to be ageless and truly remarkable. Very few nonprofit organizations could survive without the help of dedicated volunteers, and even fewer have a volunteer quite like Rose Allen. A mainstay at St. Andrews for the past seven years, 77 year old Rose is affectionately known around the office as mom. Whether it's stuffing envelopes, baking a birthday cake for a staff member, or wrapping and delivering holiday presents for homebound seniors, Rose is always on hand to help. I have a goal in life, and that's to do as much for other people as I can. Frank Bick was one of the earliest members of the Backstoppers back in 1959. He volunteered his support, he says, because he admires all the police does and felt a responsibility to help support the families of those who've fallen in the line of duty. Now age 84, Frank's commitment has never waned as he continues to serve on the Backstoppers board and is one of the staunchest supporters. That organization is only one of many in the region that's benefited from the support of this generous civic leader. As the former publisher of the Suburban Journals, Frank knows what it takes for an organization to be successful, and he never hesitates to say what's on his mind. Backstoppers is a marvelous organization, the best thing I've ever been in my life. Sumner High School has produced many notable alumni from tennis legend Arthur Ashe and rock and roll pioneer Chuck Berry to a host of entertainers, athletes, politicians, and civic leaders. None, however, stand taller than Caroline Fisher. A former teacher, reading specialist, and curriculum supervisor for the St. Louis Public Schools, Caroline still spends several days each week tutoring and mentoring students at Sumner and other schools. She especially enjoys being a greeter on the first day of school, where the presence of the 87-year-old alumna is a welcome and encouraging sign to students of their own worth and the value of an education. I always feel that every day is a new day and there's something to be contributed to. If you have George Fonio on your side, odds are you will be successful. A proven business leader now retired, George has turned his attention to helping promote organizations and causes in which he truly believes. An early member of the Friends Committee Board at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center, he's helped recruit nearly 300 new members there. At the zoo, his efforts are helping to grow the Marlon Perkins Society membership to a record 1,000 members. Declaring that there's many more great things to do, 84-year-old George Fonio is living proof that one man can make a difference. Just being uh, thankful for all of the blessings we have, and that gives you a responsibility. Eleanor Gershine's birth certificate says she's 80 years old, but you'd never know it. A successful real estate agent, she still works up to 25 hours a week with no plans to slow down. She's also a talented artist and can lay claim to being the oldest person ever to receive a degree from Maryville University, where she earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts at the age of 75. I always felt inadequate without a degree, she says. Plus, it sounded like a lot of fun. It's that joy for life that keeps Eleanor going, and her enthusiasm has a positive impact on everything she does and everyone she meets. You're really only as old as you think you are. And that's the way I think. So if you think that way, that's the way it is. Maybe it's an extension of his engineering mindset, or perhaps it was the influence of his mother at an early age. Either way, Milton Hyken has developed a love of music in his retirement. 
he began taking piano lessons and religiously practices every day. He also devotes considerable time to volunteering with the St. Louis Symphony, working with young people to help them gain an appreciation for the music. The list of other organizations in St. Louis that Milton supports is too long to mention. Suffice it to say, he's hitting all the right notes. I think that we should, uh, we should try and leave this world you know, in a little better way, a better place than it was when we got here. Charlie Hessel starts each day swimming laps at the local YMCA. It's a good way to stay in shape because this 80-year-old celebrity is constantly on the go. As director of the St. Louis Zoo from 1982 to 2002, Charlie provided the vision and leadership that created exhibits like the Monsanto Insectarium, the River's Edge, Penguin and Puffin Coast, and the Emerson Children's Zoo. Today, he remains one of our community's most well-known and popular figures, always in demand as a speaker, asked to serve on civic boards, or just glad-handing friends and strangers at the local coffee shop. Asked why he's never written a book about his many adventures, he replies that he simply doesn't have the patience to sit still long enough to write. Well, my slogan is, is that growing old is mandatory, but growing up is optional. As a businessman, Sam Hopmeyer ran a chain of hearing centers. Now that he's retired at age 76, he hears a different calling, one that urges him to stay involved and share his remarkable talents. A 1960 graduate of Harvard Business School, Sam often spends 12 or more hours a week mentoring young entrepreneurs, reviewing files on nonprofits that could benefit from the MAC's charitable giving program or providing leadership to the education and enterprise components of the Youth Bridge Community Foundation. A tireless worker, Sam still finds time to tend his front garden, organize monthly social events for his neighbors, and coordinate emergency response training with the help and support of his wife, Pat, to ensure his friends and family are prepared in the event of a disaster. I've, I've always been involved in uh, extracurricular activities, so to speak, even when I was uh, fully employed. So that's been my modus operandi. Keep moving. You might say that 78-year-old Helen Hume's life is a work of art, whether she's painting, drawing, taking photographs, or creating digital compositions on the computer. Helen lives to share her love of art with those around her. She's written eight books on the subject and regularly volunteers with the St. Louis Artists Guild and the St. Louis Symphony. She's been involved for years in the Symphony Volunteer Association's Picture the Music program, where thousands of children learn to draw to the music. Teaching is my art, she says. Most people would call it a masterpiece. It's better to be among the wounded than the watchers, and meaning that, that if you don't stick your neck out and try something new, that you haven't, you haven't just really lived life to the fullest. Every community needs an anchor. Along the Shreve Avenue corridor in North St. Louis, that anchor is Reverend Donald Hunter, pastor of New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. Since arriving there in 1977, the 76-year-old pastor has doubled the size of the congregation, erected a new educational center, started a summer academic, visual, and performing arts program for community youth, and worked to stabilize the neighborhood with new affordable housing and other community programs. A man of deep faith, he proclaims that nothing is impossible with God, and he proves it every day. If you have the faith, you can accomplish it. You just don't give up, you just hold on. Sooner or later, it will work out. In 1998, Dr. Ernest Jaworski received the National Medal of Technology from President Bill Clinton in a White House ceremony, recognizing his pioneering achievements in plant biology, 
and agricultural biotechnology and his contributions to scientific advancement. He continues those contributions to this day, having served as the first president of the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center, as a scientist in residence at the St. Louis Science Center, and as a science tutor at Wildwood Community College. He and his wife Pauline have also established a fund for underserved undergraduates in plant science at his alma mater, Oregon State University. At age 85 and a lifetime educator, Dr. Jaworski continues to give much of himself to the advancement of science and public education. Being science oriented, I keep up with science even though I'm 85. I'm not a science nerd, <laughs> but close. If it's summertime, you're likely to find 90-year-old sister Madeline Reiners at Bush Stadium, rooting on her Cardinals. Her ballpark visits are punctuated by visits to the clubhouse, where she catches up with friends like Tony La Russa and Yadier Molina, bringing them home-baked cookies and candy, and sharing plans for her next fundraising day at the ballpark. As development director for the Sisters of the Most Precious Blood for the past 21 years, Sister Madeline has made friends across the community. Her warm smile, humble demeanor, and genuine love of people make her an ambassador of kindness, goodwill, and love to everyone she meets. Well, my philosophy of aging is don't sit down in a rocking chair. Keep moving around and doing things. Lunchtime in a school cafeteria is rarely a memorable culinary experience, unless you happen to eat at a school where Brother Leo Slay is in charge. As food service director at Marianist Schools for the past 40 years, Brother Slay continues to serve up great tasting food and an entertaining atmosphere for students, teachers, and staff every day. His expertise led him to be chosen to travel to armed services bases and ships around the world, where he's evaluated food service operations and helped to raise the quality of the food served to our men and women in uniform. Now 80, he continues in this role, while also directing the Metro Food Service Co-op and working with local food banks to help those in need. And you got to like what you're eating and what's served and so forth, and they appreciate it. That's my way of getting these people to serve their people more and God with good food service. 77-year-old Jesse Swanigan personally experienced how diverse groups and individuals worked together to improve society during the Civil Rights Movement. He's devoted much of his life since those days to bringing people together, to give them a greater understanding of different cultures and points of view. His work has ranged from starting multicultural dialogue groups at his church to advising organizations on whose boards he continues to serve. One of his greatest achievements is the founding of 100 Black Men of America Incorporated, an organization he helped found in 1986. 100 Black Men now has 116 chapters across the country and five foreign chapters, all working to mentor young men and improve the quality of life within our communities. Well, what's interesting, there's always something that comes up that you have an interest in and you want to provide some information, you know that you have a lot of uh, what they're looking for and you want to be a benefit. Ken Teasdale is a man who has always been in the thick of things. As a congressional staff member in the 1960s, he worked on the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, funding for the United Nations and the landmark Civil Rights Act. As a partner and later chairman of the Armstrong Teasdale Law Firm, he advised corporations at the highest levels for more than 45 years. After retiring in February at age 76, he continues to serve on many of the region's most influential volunteer boards, helping entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and cultural institutions to achieve success. 
I think it's important to help people as much as you can. Phyllis Termenstein has played viola with orchestras in three different cities. She has sung with the Bach Society. She's taking organ and piano lessons and has even mastered the mysteries of modern technology that enable her to download music and work her iPhone. It's hard to believe she has time for her true passion, serving as advisor to the Roland Quest Memorial Fund at the Greater St. Louis Community Foundation. Through it, she has distributed more than $2.2 million, establishing many important programs, funding renovation projects, and creating scholarships throughout the area. A remarkable woman at age 80, Phyllis is proof that doing what you love can keep you young. As I am a member of the Ageless community, I find that new experiences and new challenges are energizing, and I'm so thankful that I can still be productive and I can still make a contribution. For more than 40 years, Virginia Trent has positively impacted the St. Louis philanthropic, civic, and religious communities. A former church organist and music director, Virginia has volunteered with the St. Louis Symphony as a board member of the National Society of Arts and Letters as president of the Ledoux Chapel Nursery School Board, and as a fundraiser and program developer. Her contributions earned her recognition as a St. Louis Woman of Achievement in 2001. Because of her far-sighted leadership, she was asked to develop a public relations program at Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology, and subsequently led to her being offered a vice presidency at St. Louis Children's Hospital. Virginia has also raised countless dollars for cancer research, one of Virginia's proudest achievements is St. Andrew's Ageless Remarkable St. Louis in Celebration, an event to honor seniors and which she has chaired six times. One of the things I value most in life has been the interaction with other people. Far as the song goes, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. Bill Van Leuven isn't happy unless he's doing something productive. That's why after 27 years in the corporate world, he started a second career as a Great Clips franchisee, opening 27 locations in Missouri and Illinois. But it's his commitment to help others that makes this 80-year-old stand out. His extensive volunteer efforts range from mentoring nonprofits through the Executive Service Corps to serving on numerous boards of directors and serving as a lay chaplain in the Barnes Jewish Hospital ICU. Giving back, he says, is what he was always taught to do. We'd say he's continuing to carry on that tradition quite well. I can't imagine retiring. I, I, I like to get up with a purpose, but it's very satisfying. If you ever find yourself in the emergency room at St. Anthony's Hospital, don't be surprised if the person holding your hand and providing TLC is 91-year-old Jean Woodard. A retired nurse, Jean still volunteers two to three days a week, assisting the nursing staff with whatever chores need doing. Pitching in to help just comes naturally to Jean, who might just as well be found on a ladder painting her kitchen or taking care of her five foster cats that constantly vie for her attention. A self-described late bloomer, Jean is proof that it's never too late to get busy. My mother taught me this little model. She said, when a task you've once begun, never leave it till it's done. Be your labor, great or small, do it right or not at all. Last year, St. Louis University honored Dr. Paul Young by naming its Practical Anatomy and Surgical Education building after him. University President Father Lawrence Biondi noted at the time that Dr. Young has taught at least 90% of all living alumni from the School of Medicine during his 55 years of teaching. Now age 85, 
Paul shows no signs of slowing down. He continues to give lectures and live video demonstrations of the brain to 175 sophomore medical students. He's working on the third edition of a neuroscience textbook and helping to update interactive computer programs used throughout the world. He's also annually chosen as one of the university's most popular professors. Don't look back. Don't look back. Keep moving forward. St. Andrews touches the lives of more than 5,000 seniors each year. The Ageless Celebration not only honors the exemplary contributions of older adults, it helps generate funds to care for those less fortunate. We applaud our remarkable seniors, and we applaud all of you who have the passion and concern to help St. Andrews provide housing, health, and supportive services through your gifts to the Charitable Foundation. Thank you for sharing this special time.